I am pulling out my talent outfit for the very first time the Smithsonian called. <laughs> they wanted to curate my talent costume uh, for the like National Museum. Well, they didn't call, they emailed first and then we chatted and they wanted to curate my talent costume as a part of one of their exhibits that is being unveiled in the next month, which is crazy and special and exciting. Also, hi, I'm Nina. If you have not been here before, I'm a filmmaker activist and in a past life was the first South Asian to win Miss America, which is why my talent costume, which I performed a Bollywood dance, is uh, one of a kind and is unique. And it is the first time Bollywood had ever been performed on the Miss America stage and uh, this was my costume. And we started this conversation like a years ago. I don't know, there's so many emotions. It really hasn't settled in yet until, like I knew this was happening, but I didn't really think about it. And now I'm like sending the outfit and it's kind of like my last time with it ever like alone. <laughs> and you know, like I said, it's been so long since I've unpacked any of it. So we're gonna do this together because I just feel like there's so much memories attached to it. It's been 10 years since that moment. This is the skirt. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It looks so tiny. Ah, oh my gosh. Oh, I loved this. Honestly, my mom picked out this skirt in a store in Vijaywada, and I remember telling her I wore this costume for Miss New York as well. And I said, it's better be ready to go for Miss America because I won Miss New York in July of 2013 and Miss America was September 2013. So you really didn't have time in between the competitions to change much and so i was like this costume has to be the costume if i win miss new york that's gonna go on the miss america stage and she picked this one out and all the credit truly is goes to mama d because i was like i i'm not there trust your judgment um and she did and mama d delivered she definitely delivered. And I thought this was so cool. Oh my gosh, it's still pinned. Ah, oh. <laughs> it's still pinned on. I remember the night before, oh my gosh, like I remember when I was practicing and getting ready to um, like change, like practice changes because when you're competing for Miss America, it's a live show and you literally have commercial breaks, which are like one to two minutes where like you are changing and going to the next phase of competition. So when you see us go from like our evening gown to our talent, we have like two to three minutes max to like do all of it. So like, and to put on an Indian outfit and like pin everything, we pre-pinned everything. I remember like getting this down to a science of like, I would practice, like take my evening gown off in like the studios at Ripley Greer and like take my gown off and time it to like get this dress on. Like, and it, we timed it down to like seconds of how quickly we can do this. And I remember, of course, we had it pre-pinned on the blouse, like on the back, of course. See right there. Actually, this I totally forgot we did. There was like a pin we added on in the front. I should untangle this. This was interesting because we actually added like a little hook. So like in the front, there's actually like a little hook here where we stitched on a hook. If you can see that. We stitched on a hook on the dupatta and then so I could just like hook it on and pin it before I went on stage. Like I didn't have to worry about it. And of course we like pre-pinned the pleats and everything. and. I'm gonna leave it like this actually to give it to the Smithsonian because I feel like it needs to stay in this shape. Like I was thinking about unpinning it and now I'm like, no, we should leave it the way it was that day because I feel like that seems so much more 
real. Um, but this is also the thing that we added on um, beforehand in, in practices because this was like the part that came and like hooked into my hair. This part was like so clutch. This was like probably one of the best things that we did because it like stayed on. I had done like a basically also I had to change my hair. I totally forgot. So not only am I changing my dress and everything and like just stripping down like no shame. There's no time for shame. Um, I also had to put my hair up. So I was like in long waves like ugh like for my evening gown and then I had to like throw it up into a sock bun and then get this on over um, but it ended up it ended up working which which was genius I also do have to give a shout out because there are like backstage um, dressers that that did help you and they assigned me three <laughs> backstage to to help me get my dress on and like one had it ready like just spread out so i would like step into it the other was like hooking things and then there was like a separate person to help me with jewelry and i was the one doing my hair so that's like how it all went down <laughs> um which is crazy i think this is kind of ready i'm not gonna do much else to it so when the smithsonian called um so apparently you have to be asked to donate something or you have to be asked, like they have a process of curating different things for their exhibits. And so when they called, when they were doing this exhibit, um, of course, the first thing that came to mind was, was this talent outfit because it's so iconic. And if there's like one thing I want to like, just live on, I guess, which I don't know why I'm getting emotional. I did not expect this. Um, it's this dress because I can't tell you how many people said to me, you know, Nina, if you're really serious about winning Miss America, change your talent because Bollywood will never win and you're too Indian, be more American and Miss America just isn't ready for someone like you. And I mean, the fact that this is now becoming like a piece of like American history and like, you know, my kids and grandkids should I have them like can walk into the Smithsonian and ask to see this is I don't have the words for it and I'm pretty good with my words <laughs> um it's just it's it's so core to who I was like I grew up a classically trained Bharatanatyam and Kuchpudi dancer and you know dance is so such a part of of our culture and who we are and who I am. And I will always say like, the feeling that I had when I was performing my talent, um, these are the bells that I wore. See, my Bharatanatyam Kuchpudi bells. Um, like the feeling that I had performing my talent and you know, even, even wearing that on stage, like, I feel like that was my true winning moment. I don't know how else to describe it. Like I was doing my little teacup spins as I call them. And I just remember feeling like something bigger than me is happening right now. Like I was, I was dancing, but it was like, I've never felt more connected and just more joyful. And I remember like at the end of it, I was tearing up. I was, I was tearing up and I didn't know why, but it was just, I could feel energy shifting of like there's something happening that I've never felt before and and that was like the biggest gift <laughs> um like experiencing that moment having that moment um and sharing something that was just truly who I was <laughs> um okay I need to calm down for a minute but it's it's crazy actually now that I'm having my private moment with <laughs> with this um I even remember like even the jewelry like everything Mama D picked out these are like some of the bangles I remember having them in specific order oh my gosh and these were these are the knee pads I used while while spinning um and I also had these little flats I have not taken out I had these little flats to run around um backstage and I took them off right before because I didn't want to like risk stepping on something rusty backstage and then having, I don't know, some sort of accident. So these were like the little slippers that I packed for that. 
and these are the bangles that I had for these. Mama D did really well. Like I haven't even gotten a chance to admire how how pretty these are. They're definitely out of order, but these were so pretty. Everything just came together, and I remember finishing my talent and just like <laughs> like having a moment of like just emotions and. I remember like even the girls behind me, the, the contestants that I competed with and the incredible women I should say that I competed with, I just remember them like clapping. I didn't see this until the video, until after, but like I even like while during my dance, like they were clapping, the entire hall was clapping to the music and just like feeling that like, just feeling the energy and, and sharing something. Like there's something about events like competitions and Miss America or sporting events where everyone is in it together and that felt like one of those moments and um, one of my best friends to this day Desi hi Desi um, I'm actually in her wedding coming up um, but she was like I cried during your talent she's like I cried watching you win more than I would have ever cried for myself and it was true there was just something magical about that performance like that performance was it like that's what I think America saw um, and like feeling seen, feeling just so represented. Um, I need to get a tissue. Okay, Whew. all right, I'm back. Um, I forgot I had this in here. This is a fun little gem I found. This is a little box of bobby pins that I had because of course we need a million bobby pins for this. And there's still some still some left over in here. I have, oh yeah, there's one little, I don't know if you can see it. There's one little bindi left in this packet and my little bobby pins in this little clear case here. So she was prepared. She was prepared to take it home, y'all. Like she, I had everything. Oh yeah, and I had a million safety pins too. So there's more like safety pins in here. I was gonna go big or go home, so. And there's my bag, it says New York Talent, which I wrote and labeled myself. So yeah, I'm gonna basically pack all of this up um, for the museum. I lost my train of thought. I remember saying, you know, I can sing, and I thought about changing my talent to singing. And it's, it's so funny how things work out because I remember there was a brief moment when everyone was telling me, you know, change your talent. As you know, I like to sing and I'm good at singing, but I had never trained in singing until now at this point in my life in real time. And so I was like, well, maybe I should sing, I don't know. And then ultimately when it came down to it, I was like, no, like at the end of the day, if I'm gonna win Miss America, you know, it has to be in my terms and in my way. And I knew that like, this was a part of me, dance specifically was a part of me that I was not willing to, to give up, like that was a non-negotiable. And I was like, no, at the end of the day, when I lay my head on my pillow at night, I can say that I had represented myself most truly and most authentically. And that's what meant everything to me. And um, this is such a full circle moment because, you know, when they even called about this exhibit, they were like, we would love to curate something of yours and it was just so easy for me to say my talent costume like my talent outfit because that is the most authentic piece of me and in, in all of it and that's what america got to see that's what you got to see um and that was just one of the out of body experiences and most meaningful moments um because it was it was true and i think like it just goes to show that like when you are connected with your truest self, when you are actually following a knowing inside you of that you're meant to be doing something, the path will open for you and you will feel it. And I could have never guessed what would have happened when I won Miss America. I could have never understood, you know, what becoming the first South Asian to win Miss America meant before winning and now having the hindsight of 10 years later of seeing everything that's happened um, and the impact and I still don't understand the impact. I don't 
know if I ever will fully, I suppose, but having this full circle moment of it's not about a shiny crown, you know, it's, it's a piece of me that I get to leave behind as Mina. Like I'm leaving this costume behind forever archived in embedded in American history as Mina Davalori. And that makes me just so happy. So I'm just so grateful. This is my acceptance speech round two, apparently. Um, I'm just so grateful to, um, to be a part of it. And um, I'm excited to see the unveiling. And I did tell the um, person who is um, helping dress the exhibit or they preserve the costumes and everything. Um, we're gonna have a call um, and I'm gonna let her know where things are going. They wanted to make sure that everything was in place, as did I, and so that's gonna be next week. And I'm taking Mama D with me and I know she'll never always say how proud she is, but this 100% like, Mama D picked out this entire costume with zero consultation from me, and I think a piece of her gets to have that too, which is really special. So I'm did not expect to be so emotional, so I'm sorry you have to watch my crying face. Um, but I'm just I'm just so happy. So I can't wait to to see it in a few weeks, and for my mom to be a part of it, and yeah, for everyone to be able to, to forever see it as well. So. I will see you from there next time. I'm gonna go mail this now.